another episode of Justin the Food Entrepreneur's Podcast. I'm Justin Bizarro. I'm your host. That's B-I-Z-Z-A-R-R-O. And you can find me on social media at Instagram and Facebook at Justin Bizarro. And you can find the podcast on social media at Facebook and Instagram at Justin the Food Entrepreneur's. So today I have back with us Valerie Culpit and Justin Fox of Birch Mountain Barbecue. How are you guys doing today? Doing well. Doing pretty good. Thank you. How are you? We're doing. We're doing very well. Just surviving, I guess. Um, although I, yeah. I would say we're we've made the most of it. We've adjusted to whatever it is that's coming our way, and as a family, as a team, as a company, and we now just keep moving forward. So, knowing yeah. life will never be the same again. Exactly. Yeah. So. Tell me a little bit about you guys. Last time we talked, it was sort of COVID had just started and, and you guys were still doing your barbecue business um, and, you know, sort of making it work with what was going on. So tell us how all that worked and, and what's been going on with you guys. And I think actually we should probably refresh the audience and a little bit of how you guys got started um, with a barbecue company. Yeah. Okay. No problem. Um, so Birch Mountain Barbecue was born on a road called Birch Mountain Road here in Wenatchee, Washington. Uh, Justin and I both are not Wenatchee, Washington, uh, you know, native. We are transplants to the Pacific Northwest. Justin is born and raised in Oklahoma, and I was raised in Louisiana. So we brought a lot of our tastes of food and love of foods, and uh, Justin's, of course, Coal and wood fire barbecue up to the Pacific Northwest, um, which is not very prominent here at all. Um, so that's kind of how we were born. Um, it was in October of 2018. Uh, we started kind of before that cooking for family and co workers and company clubs, and then got our business license uh, that fall of 2018, and it just kind of grew from there. Um, we had one smoker, and then we ordered our mobile unit that showed in 2019. And we spent all of 2019 just working, 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 a lot of pop-ups, festivals, caterings. Um, and we did our very first catering in about 12 inches of snow in February. Uh, but we we grew a lot in 2019, so... Um, yeah, that's that's what happened, and we had our 2020 booked solid, just solid uh, until spring, like everybody else. <laughs> yeah, I know. Then the world changed, right? So it's kind of interesting how that happened. Um, so how we dealt with COVID in the beginning, Justin, if you remember our last podcast, we were doing those family meals um, where each week we would post a menu on our Instagram because the restaurants were all shut down, people still wanted to eat and they wanted to eat good food. They had kids at home, they were homeschooling and we were trying to just help feed the community. So we did that for like 13 weeks. Um, We would put a menu up and take pre-orders and um, go out and deliver. and, And basically we were just catering to families, individual families in our community, uh, getting them food, uh, you know, and then of course we had the meat crisis where all the meat was twenty thousand dollars a piece, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so and you couldn't get produce, and there was COVID in all the factories, and so we survived through that, just trying to you know find the meat we could afford and and cook for our community. Uh, we never took brisket off our menu. We just uh, people love it, so we tried to get it to them. you have anything to add, Justin? You know, the, the biggest thing is while we um, we grew a lot during that um, 12 weeks while the restaurants were closed, um, our Instagram base grew um, greatly just because I think we were making that physical connection where you would have to go to our page, order our food, and then um, a couple days, a day or so later, we would show up with the food and make that physical connection face to face or at your doorstep. And, um, I think that's where we, we grew our business the most. Whereas before, if we had catering or 
they had we had a pop up event or whatever. People would have your food, but they wouldn't know like, oh, they'd be like, Who, where, where, where are you guys located, or what? How do we find you? And you know, they look, they look you up, but they don't really, you know, capture how to find you. You know, because you're just you're just on Instagram or you have a website. So they half the time they misspell like how your your um, Instagram handle is or yeah. or um, whatever, you know, the website or whatever. So anyway, um, yeah, so we made a lot of actual um, connections in the community and that's how our, our fan base grew, I think. And that's when we realized that our food was actually a commodity here and we should – open up some kind of to go or pop up or um, to go or um, counter service, not necessarily a brick and or- mortar, but a place to just for people to come and get food. So we've kind of are transitioning into pivoting that. Again. Yeah. Pivoting, pivoting, again. <laughs> pivoting one more time. Are you that. keeping the trailer? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And that, that, that will be our mobile kitchen. Yeah, we pivoted at 360 nowadays. But, yeah, so what we, Justin and I did is we signed a lease um, beginning of June uh, on a place that is not in the, quote, city or downtown because of having the outdoor smokers. You know, we didn't know if we were going to be able to do that. And nobody here, you know, health departments kind of shut down for just about every question. And, you know, a lot of the the government offices are closed. So we we felt like where we signed this lease, more rurally, but easy to get to, people could get to us and Mm -hmm. get our food. The location is actually labeled an opportunity zone. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. And there was an article in the paper, too, that this county that we did uh, sign the lease in is actually grown and growing. So we're kind of excited about that. We're off the highway. We're in between Wenatchee, East Wenatchee. And then there's also a town here called Quincy that has a huge Microsoft um, corporation and some other things there. So if they really wanted, they're like, say, going to work from Wenatchee, they would have to pass us. And so that's kind of what we're doing right now is we're trying to get this rolling and and working, um, it probably would be some time. We've turned in our menu review um, to the health department, but we have to wait till they're physically out from the inspections again to inspect what we're doing, you know, for for us to actually open up. But but our mobile, like Justin said, our mobile unit that can also be approved to use as our kitchen, and we still rent a commercial kitchen space until we can get all this transitional it's sort of a hybrid situation yeah okay so i mean what i mean let's talk about the menu i mean what are you guys thinking for the i mean the standard menu for this place i mean you just submitted it so let's get into details here and why you know each item i mean let's tell a little story here of what you guys were thinking or if there's success you found it in 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 your current um mobile kitchen so i mean let's dive in sure so menu review Health department standards are every time you get a new permit, you have to do a menu review, whether it's a temporary permit, our catering permit, we had to turn in a menu review. Um, Anytime you get a new type of permit, they want to look at a menu review, which basically what it is, is you list out what you're going to serve and what temperature it needs to be at safely. All of the safe health department guidelines that are involved around meat, produce, whatever. Um, but if, if you want to talk about what kind of food we feel is successful that Justin wants to serve out of our counter service, um, I can hand that over to him, but you know, he'll tell you more about what his plans are and what we found people love. Um, I know our brisket is always a top seller, but he definitely loves to be inventive. Um, he's been talking about a, is it the turkey with the pimento cheese and, Oh, just, we have so many different things that <laughs> we went. Um, I know you follow us, so I, I know you've seen a lot of the things we do. Um, uh, we've we've done everything from 
like uh, Tex-Mex style to um, Southern based foods to which all that stuff is not available here. I mean, even in the uh, highly populated um, uh, Mexican and Latino community here, there just isn't um, Tex-Mex style food here. Um, which is a huge hit when we put it on our menu. Um, that um, everybody goes crazy over our southern based f- stuff. Um, everything from red beans, red beans and rice to dirty uh, rice. Dirty rice um, potato salad is potato, our, yeah, our southern potato salad. Mustard based dill pickle. It's just all all that stuff is a hit. So. I think Justin's goal here at the counter service, though, is to do, you know, capture something that can be picked up and eaten on the go, maybe like uh, yeah. burritos made out of brisket, pulled pork, you know, all, all that sort of thing. But we, we can also do, you know, a larger meal. We make a bread pudding that um, really, I mean, we just did this yesterday for a catered lunch for about 50 people. Um, it's a blueberry cream cheese breading, and you really could use any fruit, whatever is, um, you know, current and harvest. I, I stole the recipe from my friend Valerian Squill on, on Instagram. <laughs> it's Scott Randall's his name. Cook at TT's Iron. Iron you um, stole the concept. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's but it's, uh, it's, it's our bread pudding recipe, but it's a uh, blueberry cream cheese um Blueberry cream cheese. It's yep. like it's basically cheesecake bread pudding fusion <laughs> with whatever fruit fruit you want to put in it. That's pretty it's awesome. Ridi- it's ridiculous. I'm a huge I'm fan of bread, bread pudding. It, oh just... my gosh, it's ridiculous, dude. I don't even use a sauce on this one, just because the cream cheese adds the moisture, and you, know, you top it with a mixture of sugar and cinnamon and bake it and i guess we i guess we know what you're entering things. into flavor wars uh, and and i will only accept one entry from you guys only what's that only bread pudding can be an entry into flavor wars if you guys enter it oh i don't actually is this supposed to be in in person in georgia right <laughs> yeah no i'm just it sounded so good that's a long way to go <laughs> we can't go up we can't go up against the lane anyway <laughs> but if you're up this way <laughs> Tell me, and I'll I'll make you a bread pudding. Yeah. Lanes are our heroes. Yeah, yeah. yeah I um, don't know. We'll see. I I keep trying to challenge him to enter the barbecue brawls. We'll see if he enters. He has good stuff. I hope so. I hope so. They probably will. Yeah, they're 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 they got some amazing stuff. Um, I, I'm part of their pitmaster league too. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, they're quite people. Um, but yeah, I guess that's kind of what we've been doing here um, lately. Justin is is trying to get this place open and going, and just, um, a lot canceled or rescheduled this year. I've got one gal, and that was probably like seven or eight. Um, and then I've had some that I've quoted. I don't know why. I should have wasted the time. <laughs> but I quoted even after everything started, and then they would call back and cancel. Like I, so I quit wasting my time on that. But um, but the ones – I've got one gal holding out in August that has a wedding, and she hasn't canceled yet, but I expect her to. And everything else has been 50 people or less, you know, rehearsal dinners, small weddings, um, just things like that, wineries. A lot of wineries have been asking us to come up and serve our food, and they've been doing outdoor seating for their customers. And we actually did a rehearsal dinner at a winery. Uh, she just last minute said, hey, can you serve my 40 guests while you're at this winery? We were be there. We're like, yeah, we can do that. Well, that's pretty um, awesome. So that was great. Um, and then we have partnered with a distillery in Leavenworth, which I don't know, it seems to be a pretty nationally known area. It's here close to where we are, and it's a German town. So a lot of people know of it for uh, Oktoberfest destinations and things like that. Um, So a distillery asked us to come 
and start having our food there every Friday and Saturday, uh, they need eight menu items. And so far, we've rolled out four. We'll roll out our fifth one this weekend, which are, is our bourbon brine smoked turkey breast sandwich. Um, so they ask us to do that for them so they can open back up. So I think a lot of the alcohol, you know, companies are asking to partner with us so they can get back open. They have to have food by the liquor board, you know, standards for them to serve their alcohol. And um, it's been a great partnership so far. We've only been at it probably for about a, a month or so now. And they want to go through the end of the year and just kind of reevaluate things. So that's been fun. Um, they do some craft uh, cocktails. They have tequila, rum, uh, bourbon, uh, vodka that they themselves make there. So that's been interesting. Um, Justin's going to go out there tomorrow and do some on-site baby back ribs uh, for most of the day. And we're doing a whole pork mac and cheese, um, chicken street tacos there. We've got a brisket sliders. Um, you do your confetti slaw and a pineapple cilantro slaw and uh, our pulled pork mac and cheese. And then we're also getting our um, turkey out this week. So yeah, I don't know if he's released that on the menu or not. But Yeah. Surprise. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. This podcast won't air. It won't air until after he's announced it tomorrow. But, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, it'll, pr- it'll probably go out tonight, but um, oh, people yeah. still have time. It won't oh, go yeah. out until later tonight. Yeah. It'll be in their, they'll, they'll be eating it tomorrow yeah. before yeah. before they even realize what hit them. That's, That's right. So do you use some of the this distilled par- products in your so food as well? So how does that – tell me about the, that collaboration. Where, so whenever we first were approached by them, that was one of the first things we noticed is that on their menu – there wasn't one item that had made a marriage with their former partner. We'd asked them, we said, Hey, what was going on? Like, why, why had the former um, chef or whoever was in here before, how come they hadn't um, taken that opportunity to marry the foods that they were working with? Um, any you used any of the, the liquor or any of the, the distilled products you have into the food to promote it and make dollar rings for you guys. And they really didn't have an answer for that. And I said, let's do this. I said, let's like anything we do can, you know, cross, cross coordinate with uh, what we do. I said, I said, we can, you know, we can always push whatever you're, you're doing that week or, or just promote whatever you want to, Bush. Now, last week, Justin spritzed the chicken that we used for the street tacos with, with the, the tequila. T- tequila, lime tequila. Was it lime tequila? A, yeah, it was a lime tequila, and you spritzed the chicken with that last week, which yeah. most of the alcohol will burn off. Right, so. but it's a black. It's a blackened chicken anyway, so it's mm-hmm. spicy, and then you hit it with that lime lime tequila, and it's just. And then I made a, a frozen sweetness. margarita pie um, for them. To oh yeah. The very first weekend. The frozen margarita pie was... It had the, yeah. actually tequila in the yeah. um, custard that the, the pie custard is made and, and in the whip, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. In the whip. Yeah, so that one was, was good. And then, of course, we'll use their bourbon for our bourbon brine turkey now. Yeah. Um, that'll be a regular menu item where we can use their bourbon to... We, we do a great turkey brine with bourbon and... Um, it's got uh, clove and orange and, and allspice and bay leaves. If you can just imagine all those smells together, it's incredible. I just, um, I'm so curious as to like the next steps in the of the marriage, because I think it's just such a natural progression for you guys to, mm-hmm. to take that step because, um, I, I don't know why more people don't do it. <clears throat> I don't know if you guys grew up in the 90s, but I grew up in the 90s. In the early 90s, there was a show called In Living Color. Yeah. And yeah. there was this clown. He was played yeah. by Damon Wayans. Oh. Oh, and he's oh. called Homie the Clown. Mm-hmm. Homie, don't play he, that. Yeah, he walks around with a sock. And it yeah. has a tennis ball in it. And when yeah. the kid or someone would say something they didn't like, he just like hit him with a tennis ball. And he'd be like, I don't think so. Homie, don't play that. Yeah. And this yeah. is where Homie I'm like... If you're going to go and you're going to bring go into someone else's business and you're going to form a relationship, why not figure out how to mutually both grow? And it's exactly what you guys did. 
Exactly. And I got to tell you, I run into a lot of entrepreneurs, obviously, just not only the podcast, but in business that don't understand the value of that collaboration. You know, and it's part of the whole reason we're doing the Food and Entrepreneur Summit. And so I'm glad this came up and you guys hit on something that's very important is if you're going to promote your business, you might as well promote someone else who's also promoting your business. That's a right. two times multiplier right there, your fans mm -hmm. and their fans. And no one yep. gets that. And then for them, if they're a good partner, they'll do the same for you. This sure. is them. This is our link. This is it. Now I got your fans. Now I've double multiplied my social media. I've double multiplied my fans, not only by being there, but cross my products. And not only right. that, it's an investment in the future. Let's say the turkey bourbon thing that made me drool on the paper on my uh, podcast studio <laughs> is makes it, right? And it goes commercial. And people are like, oh my gosh, let's do this raw and let's put it in an ovenable bag and let's sell it in the grocery stores and let's send it everywhere. But now mm -hmm. both of you benefited because you had that collaboration and you built that together to get that recognition in the first place. That's the type of things I'm talking about. I mean, honey companies, honey barbecue. I mean, you could probably do something with them also, a honey company. I don't know what honey's like in Washington, but honey, I would assume. Here. You know, those yeah. are the type of things that people, why not do it? We're so afraid of giving credit away or to someone else or wanting all the credit for ourselves that we fail to recognize that the – you. To get to the top, it's actually the people that give away most of the credit. You know, they're right. they're not the ones focused on doing the, doing the right thing. They're they're building everyone along with them. And so, why not do it as entrepreneurs? And so, I like right. what you're doing. I think it's the right mm -hmm. path. And I don't. And I think your point earlier, where you guys pivoted, that is it right there. Right? We don't really know where we're going. We just know we're going there. And there's going to be different opportunities and obstacles that you guys have jumped through COVID and now. You know, it's pretty bold to go try to do somewhat of even a brick and mortar, even if you aren't cooking, right? But it's the right thing to do right now. What? Why not right. make sense? You have a mobile kitchen anyway. Why not send stuff from the mobile kitchen wherever that is to a location also? You know, right. so I get the concept and I think it makes sense. And you don't need it in the building if you're mobile. You could have four units that you're selling things in and just do it out of two mobile kitchens potentially and not have four restaurants. Right. So right. Exactly. that's exactly yeah. our, our, our route. Re no restaurants, restaurant. restaurants aren't a culture right now. No. Yeah. I mean, COVID shut that down yeah. and you know, that can happen again. Yeah. We want to just have people be able to have a location because that's what we ran into Justin, even with the dinners is, and we get it today. We got it yesterday when we did that lunch, where can I find your food? Well, honestly, unless we're doing an event, you, you can't. can't. And, and I, I don't want that to be a thing. I want to say, Oh, you can find our food at X, Y, and Z on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from this hour to this hour. Uh, you know, you can find our food there. I want to be able to say that because we're missing a huge market, not having at least, even if it's three days a week, two days a week, I'm not expecting Justin to be here seven days a week as a restaurant would, but Hey, this is where you can actually go buy our food and, and check for the menu. You know, maybe Mondays will be ribs and Wednesdays will be brisket and, and Fridays will be, you know, pulled pork, you know, maybe they will be, that's the route we go. But I, we do miss a huge market not being able to say, here's where you can find your food. But we actually do now because when people ask, you say, yeah, who's distillery. Spirits distillery? So we do have that connection on Fridays and Saturdays. And that's been nice to, to be able to say that, um, too. So, um, But that's just as of late. So. And then back to what you were saying about small businesses and, food and entrepreneurs supporting other entrepreneurs. It's true. Everybody, you know, as humans, we want to have the glory of our business being everything that we do and nobody being a part of that. And, and that's hard to do, to take in another person as part of your business product. But with Justin, I've been trying to help him understand, too. We use a barbecue sauce that everybody loves and it's another small business out of california i'm not sure if i can can i say the company on the podcast yep absolutely okay so it's five monkeys and they're out of california and they're just the kindest people and they have an instagram so anybody can also follow them 
we serve their product and we used to be able to put their bottles out, but now that COVID's come, we can't. We have to do the two ounce little portion cups. And I try to make sure I'm telling everybody, okay, this is not, now Justin makes sauce. He makes an Alabama white sauce. He makes a, uh, a mustard based sauce. Mustard, so kind of he makes sauce. sauce. But <laughs> why not support somebody else and say, okay, then we also have your barbecue based sauce. It's not ours, but this is the company. This it's is where you can purchase sauce. it. It's where you can buy it. And they give us the greatest shipping discounts and just our last order. He shipped it even before I paid my invoice because he's like, I know you're good for it. So, you know, those type of connections are just so important um, to make sure we're supporting them too uh, yeah. during all, all of this. And here's where I'm going to blow everyone's mind, I think, a little bit. And I think everyone may realize this, but they don't realize it to the extent of their own business. Why do you think grocery stores do white labels? Yes, it's an opportunity to make profit. Of course it is. But why do they do it in the first place? Because they know that adding another competitor to the shelf increases the opportunity that someone will buy something. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it's the yep. same. If there's now two sauces, you've increased the opportunity that someone will buy at least one thing. Mm-hmm. Yep, you got it. Where if it's Absolutely. just yours by itself, you've not created that opportunity because it's just yours. And right. so the mindset to barbecue sauce doesn't come because you need multiple things to do it. And the right. grocery stores have been doing it for years. So why not do it as entrepreneurs? Why? Hey, I do barbecue sauce. You do barbecue sauce. That's great. I know we kind of compete with each other, but maybe we can help each other out. How can we yeah. do that? How can we use each other's sales channels? How can we use each other's social media? How can we do this? How can we share a booth? You know, mm -hmm. cut our costs mm -hmm. down for events. How can I do this farmer's market? I'll carry your product. You go do that farmer's market. You carry my product. Now there's two of us and both our products are getting double coverage. Yeah, exactly. And you commit to right. giving both products 100%. Why? Because at the end of the day, two products guarantee us more of a sale than just one. That's so. right. You are correct. Yeah. yeah, you do. And you just have to be supportive of each other, too. I mean, it's definitely going to help business-wise, but then just morally. I mean, gosh, we're all in this together, like that famous phrase, but uh, we kind of are. We kind of are all in this together. Yeah. <clears throat> it's true. I mean, it's a, it's been a little tough in, in everyone and the downs. And life is sort of not quite the same, at least I've experienced. But yeah. um We'll see, um, you know, so the opportunity zone thing that you guys mentioned, I want to talk about that a little bit. I think one of the things that's cool in the United States is there are you, at least I think you're talking about the U S government designated opportunity zones where you sort of get, you know, benefits for employing people there and, and helping, um, what's normally a historically underutilized business zone, for example, is, a is an opportunity zone or a subcategory of that. So things like that, um, you know, and the reason I'm familiar with it is because in Milledgeville, Georgia, where we've built our facility, our $120,000, $3,000 thousand square foot facility, way more than that dollar amount. Um, yeah. But um, we did the same thing. It's a hub zone, you know, and it's an opportunity zone, which means it helps us create jobs and, and do the right things for the communities. And a lot of those areas, people are, you know, there's great employees looking to work. There's people looking to work. There's opportunities to do the right thing again. You know, we talk about doing the right thing. Why not do that? I think what you guys are doing is awesome. And you're creating opportunity and creating jobs and moving your business forward. Because it's more than just that. It's about, you know, giving people a chance also, not just yourselves. But in do giving other people a chance, the funny thing that happens is you... Um, grow yourself as an entrepreneur so yeah, it's pretty well, cool you. what you guys what do you, what you guys are doing so absolutely we um you know we last time you and i talked well, well that we three talked we we told you about us starting a boot camp right a business boot camp yep and we did that all through zoom um it was good it was good we i learned quite a bit about just the business ins and outs which Justin leads, you know, in my in my lap, which is fine. I totally respect that. He is a great, you know, cook, 
and I try to keep the scheduling and, and things behind the scenes. But um, he did go to all of them and hopefully absorb some things. But, you know, if part of this um, business boot camp, uh, we also ended up being, I you know, a six, one of the 16 semifinalists of, of a, a contest going on here right now. Um, so it's open for public voting and starting today. Oh, and there one you go. Of the, yeah, one of the things what the Opportunity Zone, like you spoke of, is it helped us be one of the semifinalists. It was a uh, added added so many points to your submission yeah. um, for choosing this area. You got so many points, or not just this area, but an Opportunity Zone you got points towards your submission on, you know, being selected. So that was all we didn't know. This is kind of how we do our, do our work. We just, by proxy. yeah, like you said, we just do when we do it. Oh, and then, okay. Oh, okay. Well that worked out. <laughs> yeah. So that was beneficial with the opportunity zone situation was it did allow us to, to be, um, you know, have higher points, I guess, for the final selection of the semifinalists. So, yeah. And I mean, the cool thing about these zones is normally they have like historic buildings. I mean, so there's opportunities there, you know, the rent's a little bit lower, the, the there's, they're trying to get people back in because they want to rebuild these communities and incentivize people in, you know, these communities to come revitalize and attract people in to help them do that versus going to build something new. They're like, Hey, there's this existing thing and maybe it needs work. And yes, it's this area, but let's rebuild this area instead of going to try to build a brand new area. That's a farmland, you know? And I really like that. And I think the way it creates jobs and revitalizes places, um, Mm -hmm. is, is a good thing. uh, What I'll call re-urbanizing in some ways. Um, right. I agree. And I with agree. things like farming, urbanized farming and stuff like that, that's coming around. I see there's a lot of opportunity to do things like that. And, you know, and with mobile kitchens, for example, I don't need to put a kitchen in this new opportunity zone. I can have really cool storefronts and just do the grab and go. And I like what you guys are doing there. I think it's a totally amazing idea. And not to mention, you can pop up anywhere on top of it. You exactly. Know? do yeah. festivals do whatever i mean the maneuverability that you guys have is pretty cool so, yeah we're definitely not stuck to a to a building that's for yeah, sure yeah so tell me more i mean what's what's the you know what are you guys looking into next i mean you, you've got this and you know i'm mm-hmm. a big dreamer so i can't imagine that this is it right now <laughs> well i really I, you know we're all just kind of trying to figure it out but that's kind of where we are right now just just like you said we want this going we want to still be able to be mobile and go other places um you know we're gonna have to start hiring some people so i guess the big what's next to us is you know having to hire some staff Justin and i have been a two-person show we do have a gentleman that helps us out, so I don't want to not give him credit. His name is Ivan, and he really does help us out for events. Um, so the most of the time, we are a two-person show till 1 or 2 in the morning or whatever it takes. So I guess the next big thing is we're going to have to hire people to help us in, in that trust. You know, the trust that it takes for that might be the hardest thing. Your biggest le- your biggest lesson right now is going to be learning to let go and trust so your business can grow. That's, so that's, that's also, a hard one. Also, too, you know, just in the barbecue, it's a learning process. There's yeah. everything from learning, you know, fire to um, cutting brisket to trimming to, you know, it's all – none of that stuff is like just – you can't put a policy manual on that. Yeah, there's yeah, no, not like that. There's true. No matter how many standards you write, there's a certain amount of what I'll call tribal knowledge that has to go into food. Exactly. So. An apprenticeship. Yeah, there's, it's yeah. basically that's it what it's going to be. Yeah. It's a skill, and it's no doubt that it takes time. And I don't think a lot of people realize that because they throw together and follow recipes in their kitchens at home. What right. the difference is to be a business person in food, not only the regulations and jumping through all the hoops, being in business, but then, I mean, everyone has different palates. You cooking at home, you cook to your own like. When you cook for everyone else, you're trying to cook something great that covers your target audience, you know, and there's a different pressure there. And so, um, but what you guys are doing, I mean, I think it's really cool. And I think, 
you know, you're going about it the right way and you're growing at a controlled pace and you're sort of making sure you explore things and, and look at concepts and, you know, you know, the hardest part is learning to let go. I mean, I know when you build something and it's just you and someone else or four of you and you're like, oh no, we need to grow to eight people. Um, you know, it's always yeah. keeping control without controlling too much, you know, as there's that weird balance and I, God, I, that's exciting. Seriously. Like it's an exciting part, like so cool, but yeah, a yeah. lot of time, a lot of training, you know, other big thing here for Justin, uh, we have, I guess to say where we're going is we do have a huge pit being, being, I guess, built or we, we surely been ordered that. Uh, yeah, I don't remember if we ordered it when we talked to you last, but I think we yeah. had actually. So, Mover Smokers is building Justin a thousand gallon yeah. um, smoker, um, and that we'll be having, we'll have that on site beginning of wow. next year. So, that'll give us the opportunity just to cook an enormous amount of uh, meat at one time. So, I guess, you know, for you so said, what's next? That'll kind of be a thing. That's yeah. pretty cool. Is, We'll have a, that. Yeah. It's a thousand gallon offset pit. Uh, I don't know. Do you, are you familiar with Sonny's Sonny Mover? No, I'm not at all. He's like he's, he's built for like Terry Black and like basically almost everybody in Texas. Oh wow! Kent, Ronnie, Ronnie Killen. Anyway, um, yeah, he's got like almost a year's waiting list to get. Uh, that would explain it's, why next year so you guys have been on yeah. this for a while exactly yeah. we ordered it um, when it was beginning of this year yeah so he's that's in the works and it'll be it'll be at the lease location on site so you know he can definitely cook large amounts of, of food so who knows what'll happen if if large we have a lot of orchards here and, um, you know, it'd be great if Justin could cook large amounts of meat, you know, for the it'll staff. Be on, it'll be on a trailer, so, like, it'll be mobile, too. It won't be a kitchen approved, but it'll be, you yeah. know, mobile. And take it to some Oh, uh, yeah. Stuff. I think we might have talked a little bit about this before. Because it didn't have yeah. to do with your email address. Oh, no, that's no, the one we have now. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay. All right. You know, this will just be um, you know, something you can take and just cook. The, the the grill we have now, we can cook a fair amount of meat on, but it definitely has its limitations. I think the biggest party of people we've ever fed is about three, four hundred, four hundred, yeah. and that was shifts of cooking. So yeah. it wasn't uh, four hundred people you meat. Probably feed more depending on the proteins. Yeah. yeah, you know, you have the Santa Maria surface, and then you yeah. have the smoker, so you can run all that at the same time with different varieties of meat. Right. But yeah, 400 people is about the biggest of party we fed off of our current mobile grill at one time. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, this will really allow him to do that. But again, it's not going to be here until the beginning of next year. And I'm hoping by that time, just some of the larger corporations have gotten back to doing business. So, you know, Microsoft or um, all the fruit orchards that we have and, um, Things like that, you know, are back and they need these large amounts of meat, hopefully. Yeah, that's really cool. So, um, yeah. that's, um, so, I mean, <clears throat> you're, that'll obviously help. So, that'll be a second mobile unit? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, that's really cool. things and stuff, but it'll, it'll be able to go on location, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's fun. So yeah. big move. That's a that's a, a big maneuver there, and then you'll be able to provide more food, which is really yeah. cool. Yeah, I'm trying to think about kind of what we've been thinking about, um, you know, for our next adventure, and that's been kind of it. That's what we're focusing on now. Is that guys coming and trying to get our counter service uh, services open, um, keeping our menu fresh. I guess that's always a thing yeah. with us. We don't want it to get mundane. Um, you know, barbecue, they go, oh, it's barbecue, but but it's barbecue plus, you know, more. Um, we love to just play with stuff. You know, <laughs> we were just talking about, um, you know, a salad to do this weekend with the turkey, and I can't believe you can't get whole cranberries this time of year, but apparently you can't. So now I've got to figure out another salad and 
you know, we're just always, always coming up with stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> well, thank you guys so much for coming on the podcast and, and taking the time to do another, another interview and, so yeah. many exciting things. I'm going to figure out a way to get you to come to Barbecue Wars. I just haven't figured it out yet. I know I'm going to have to help out in some way. and I mean, our facility is right there, but I will get you there because you can't talk on the podcast about all this food and this whiskey combination thing and not enter it. So right. I, I will figure out how to assist in some way. That is my commitment well, to you for Barbecue Brawls. So, well, and, maybe, maybe and, so. You and the know. summit. Yeah, we'll figure out something. If we don't show up, though, I hope somebody out there does some amazing stuff and brings it to the table because yeah. that's definitely a great, you know, food to compete with and, and just let everybody enjoys it. And I, I listened to the podcast, most of it with you and Deborah, just kind of talking about all of that and how you wanted it to, to play out. And I think it's great. I think it's really a good Hopefully, it'll uplift some spirits of a lot of the businesses and things too. Absolutely, <clears throat> and that's the plan anyway. But we'll we'll be in touch, and you'll see me. I I can be pretty persistent and <laughs> and persuasive. So, and All I don't right. give up too easily. So there is well, that. And we'll um, have to just see how it goes for sure. Yeah, but one of the things I want to leave you guys with seriously, and I and that I know in the last. 18 years has helped my company grow and even made Milledgeville possible. And we're building another new facility in Union City, California, another 55,000 square foot facility that'll be done in November, um, which will bring us to six facilities nationwide. But what we learned is that the most important thing is to, when you train someone, is you make sure that that person understands they got to wear two hats while they're training is they've got to not only learn it so they can do it, but they've got to learn it and take enough notes where they can train someone else. And okay. people took ownership in it in a weird kind of way out of all things. It kind of grabbed on and people train people and they take ownership in their job and their skill because they can train someone else. If you ever need it, you can rely on them and they, people took ownership of the training and nice. I recommend Good people idea. trying that. So, Good idea. Okay. and it helps with growth and it helps people take ownership in your business and, and what goes on and also allow them to give you feedback on the training. Is there something you could do better? Could we write this down better? How are ways we can understand it? And then they're giving input in, they now have ownership of that document that they're now selling it to the next person because they own part of it. You know what I mean? By putting their opinion into it. So, yeah. Okay. you know, that stuff yeah. matters. I like that. And, just kind of give, kind of give them some uh, worth, yeah. some self worth. Yeah, I like that. Well, and it helps set, it weirdly helps set a standard of what's expected, you know, with growth and and the next person to do the next thing and the tribal knowledge and stuff like that because that's food, and we're in everything. We do barbecue meats to sauces to meals for hospitals to all that, and there's a lot of tribal knowledge, and unfortunately, and there's no way to really capture it in food because it is a skill. It's just takes time and it takes time doing it and it's not something that can be learned from a book you need to actually go do it for a long period of time mm -hmm. you know so um, yeah i agree i totally agree so i'll, I'll definitely take that to heart and yeah. when we start training people remember those those pointers so thank yeah you. yeah i don't know i just threw it out there because we it works for us you know if i could yeah. add something that i know that's one thing i'm like it's surprising how well stuff like that works kind of crazy sure. so yeah, especially I, I at the beginning that, mm -hmm, definitely see that being a positive and building culture and everything else pretty cool so congrats on the new what i'll call the baby trailer the little baby trailer to follow it around with the big trailer <laughs> yeah, right. yeah the right. little baby bbq and yeah, um yeah. but um but actually be able to cook more meat and um and the i love this the storefront i think it the yeah. grab and go i think this is where the world's going yeah. <clears throat> which i wanted to touch upon that too what we've seen from covid at least all i've seen from our businesses and all the meals we send all over the the country and different food is that the world has gotten very comfortable with meals at home um delivered to their home the at home meal programs your bistro mds your gobbles things like that Mm -hmm. Um, the world is, uh, ramen hero. We see miso coming in the mail now. Um, we're starting to see people like 
get very comfortable with grab and go or grab from food trucks or delivery to their home from restaurants. So restaurant seating isn't as important. Um, We're also seeing a huge amount of people just having food, like grocery style food delivered to their home. But there's also been a shift in how fresh and clean or um, knowing where their stuff is going on. I mean, there's this whole movement that's going on. Um, fresh products like you guys right from your truck to them, grab and go. I mean, that's becoming quite a big deal. Not just a restaurant serving it to you. Since the restaurant people worry about contact, they want that same type of freshness, but with like a grab and go concept or a delivery to home concept. So a lot of these quote unquote ghost restaurants, <clears throat> for anyone who doesn't know what that is, it's basically people who have a kitchen but no storefront and they're doing deliveries uh to Mm -hmm. people's homes or using the services so there's all these concepts that have come out that are sort of booming around this that's not saying restaurants are going to go away i don't believe that for a second we've been eating at restaurants since probably man was born you know we figured out some way to commercialize food so um but you know what I mean? I just think there's so much out there. So yeah, yeah. there's a shift in for the audience. We just got to pay attention to what's going on in the shift. Like I said, there's like meals going to people's homes, groceries, to people's homes, grab and go, you know, the mobile kitchen thing's brilliant. Why not be able to take your kitchen anywhere? Or if you have a, you know, a grab and go area that's hotter at one time than another, be able to support that mobily. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, I think that would be definitely a, a, the best shift for a lot of people right now, yeah. like you said. Yeah. Um, but truly, Justin and I had this conversation, too. We've been out to a restaurant probably, I don't know, less than a handful of times now that they're opening here. And honestly, it's awkward. It's very awkward. Not on top of the fact that, yeah, okay, it's there's a pandemic and you worry about COVID, getting COVID. But just the whole situation, the ambiance, the... The, oh, I thought, uh, you know, can't you can't have a menu and then you have to wear a mask until you sit down. And then how do you eat with the mask and how do you drink with the mask? And you got to put the mask back on to walk out of the restaurant. It's just awkward. So having the ability to just take your food home is amazing because you're in your own domain and you can enjoy your food without when do I put my mask on? When do I take my mask off? You know, so absolutely. It just seems to be more comfortable right now. Yeah, and <clears throat> we're going to see more mobile restaurants, what I'm going to call them. Basically, these food trucks and stuff, and you guys as mobile food trailers or mobile whatever units. Mm, trailer, we're going to yeah. start seeing where people can actually pop up small outdoor restaurants. You know, where by that I mean it's still your typical style, but we're going to see table and chairs outdoors that are six feet apart. Where it's outside, where you don't need the mask, where you don't need that thing. And then why yeah. not? And why not make it a pop-up? Because that way you don't have to worry about weather. If the weather's bad, don't pop up. If it is, yeah, great. Right. Exactly. You know, and if, you know, you can put the chairs out on a day that's nice. If it's not, then you just do the window. And we're I'm yeah. start, we're starting to see small specks of that. But this is where we're going, guys. We're going back outdoors. We're going back where food is almost a carnival, where people are more spread out, where it's outdoors, where the gatherings are going to be that way, at least for right now. Yeah. And even after a vaccine, we now know that it's possible. So really, how much back to the old ways are we going to go? I say pretty close, but even so, we now know this is possible. So we're going to be wary of it, right? For so, the next strain yeah. something, exactly. Yeah. So, And I got to say one thing about this mobile situation really quick, Justin, because anybody, any of your past podcast, you know, um, people or small businesses or food entrepreneurs, if you've ever worked mobily, just I respect it. And I hope a lot of our our, uh, customers respect it is that's hard work. I mean, it is hard work to, to lug all that stuff around, pack it up, unpack it. You know, you have a whole new way of thinking about how to cook versus, Oh, here's my commercial kitchen. I'm just going to flit around this commercial kitchen and everything's right here at my fingertips. It's not like that. (laughs) It is so much more work and thought process. And not that, you know, I would just want customers to know if the, when these mobile kitchens and restaurants start um, popping up, just to respect the fact that, that these people have worked a lot harder at doing that than they were in a commercial kitchen. Oh, absolutely. And the other part about it is the thing that 
that's missing in the scenario, and I don't know how you guys have solved this, is you need freezer and refrigeration space still. So you probably yeah, still you need that. So, you know, that's important whether you have it in the storefront or whatever, or <clears throat> like we used to do with our mobile trailers is we'd have a refrigeration, a freezer or refrigerator or both, depending on which trailer it was, uh, follow the trailer around. So, right. yeah. So at least try to support it. But I mean, it's a, it's a logistics thing, right? And you're, you're almost, you're not only you're coordinating it, but you're also hoping people follow wherever you go. But with the storefronts also that you guys are doing, I feel like what you guys have done is just such a cool thing. So we'll see what happens um, yeah. with all of it. Um, Hopefully our followers will follow us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think well, you'll have a problem. I think you guys are great. And I mean, it looks like, I mean, I've watched your social media grow uh, just over the last three months and I see your food and you know, it's a matter of time. It's a hard part about food, right? Unfortunately for someone to really like it, they have to taste it, which yeah. makes things, it's a, a logistical situation. So the key is to how do you get it to many people to taste it as quickly as possible while profiting, you know? So the food has to be good, right? Because I mean, Nobody really wants to, like, I'm an asshole. Nobody really wants to follow. <laughs> like, I don't know how we have these fun personalities, what yeah, I'm trying to say. It's, it's definitely not my personality. <laughs> Thank God you can cook, huh? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. You can cook no friends, right? You know? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I told him no. I'm just going to start putting my phone number on your website because when <laughs> he gets phone calls, it's just like, Unless they just like ask very direct questions and know exactly what they want, he just hands the phone to me. <laughs> you know, I know what a little bit what that's like. Every once in a while, <clears throat> as a creative person, you go into a flow state, which just means that for some reason you're in this hyper productive mode creatively and you know, sometimes it's hard to deal with someone and you you like, okay, I can deal with it, but I only have three minutes because otherwise I'm going to lose this amazing flow thing that I'm dealing with right now, you know, and I can be like that too. And I'm sorry for anyone I've done that too, but usually it's really because, and it is selfishly that I'm like, okay, I like I'm on to something here. I need to do this. And I can imagine that's what it's like as a chef and things like that. That's not my background. I mean, yeah, I work with okay. chefs, obviously, but I don't. I'm creative in a in a different way. So I feel you. Well, Justin, I know you've got other things to do. We do appreciate you having us back on okay. for sure. Absolutely, thank you guys so much for coming on. And um, is there anything you guys want to share with the audience before we get off? No, oh, man, I appreciate it. Appreciate mm -hmm. what you're doing. Yeah, I do. I appreciate you supporting all of us and, and what you and Deborah do on a daily basis, too. So it's it's all all part of it. And, um, yeah, we'll just keep going and keep people look for us on Instagram and see where we're headed. And, and hopefully we keep going in the right direction. <laughs> <laughs> you guys pumped me up today. I like what you're doing. That's I love the entrepreneurial spirit that you guys have. Seriously, it was great to, to talk to you guys today. Thank you very much. All right. No, you take you. care. Thank right. you, Justin. Bye. Bye-bye.